All right, have you seen this poll? It, it shows with support for those accepting serious refugees in the United States. Well, apparently most Americans do not. More than half say not, not really keen on it. And it comes as uh, Europeans essentially are feeling the same way, but it's in their neck of the wood. Now, Germany has said when it comes to these million or so refugees, and keep in mind that might be a conservative count. It might rocket all the way up to four million. Hard to say. This much is not. Outside of Germany, there's not much appetite to take them in over there, in their neck of the woods. You can imagine very little appetite here, given what's been going on in California and, of course, over there in Paris to take them in. So where the heck are these people going to go and what happens with Dr. Zudi Jassari is president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. You hear this and see this. These are people who are sort of stuck in park, right? Where are they going to go? I can understand Americans' reluctance. I can understand the Europeans' reluctance. But in the meantime, these refugees are building and building and building at these camps. Are you surprised both sides of the pond are saying... Mm. No, n not at all, Neil. It's because even our own director of our FBI said that we have no way to vet for the ideology that inspires the radicals, and there's been no strategy. I mean, the, the ultimate strategy would have been to have a no-fly zone so that they could stay in Syria, but the Assad regime wants to change the demographics of Syria. It basically ushered them out so that they could change the population, and ultimately ISIS also doesn't want them in. So we've had no strategy domestically in Syria, so ultimately Europe is dealing with it. And by the way, Prime Minister Cameron released today an in-depth report about the threat of the Muslim Brotherhood inside England and inside the UK. So ultimately, they're looking at groups that are already legal, saying that they're inspiring large political movements that radicalize their own communities. So I, it's not surprising that we're not going to let the millions of Muslim Brotherhood adherents become part of those that make their way into Europe. Um, you've always said it's time for those moderate Muslims to speak up. You've spoken up yourself, and many of your members have to be fair. But I always imagine when they, when they see this type of reaction from countries that, that are now thinking twice about accepting any of the men, and then you hear likes of Donald Trump saying, no Muslims in period, until we settle this out. Does that ferment rage? Now, Hillary Clinton might have gone too far as to say it, it, it promotes a campaign and a recruitment effort for ISIS. But among moderate, peaceful Muslims, doctor, do you get a sense that, that they, they chafe at that and get angrier at that? Not that they necessarily become radicalized, but they become alienated. Well, it's not only alienated, those of us that would be the solution. I mean, I'm the son of political refugees from Syria, and I turned out to be the ideological warrior for freedom against political Islam because this country gave me a freedom and that first liberty of religious freedom. So ultimately, if we surrender who we are, we make a, a significant strategic mistake against the narrative that is that is pushing into a quarter of the world's population, which are Muslims. So it's not just those tens of thousands that want to come here or the three to four million Muslims that are here. It's the narrative strategically that we want to say that religious liberty can be the solution against the theocrats of Saudi Arabia, Iran, So why are the there Iran more like you? You're an articulate, kind, compassionate spokesman. There are many others, believe me, I know, and I've talked to them. But not a lot to the, to the point that you, to counter this impression. Why aren't there, and does that worry you? Well, I'll, I'll admit, Neil, there aren't enough of us, but I will tell you, we have a Muslim reform movement with 14 organizations that came together, but yet the narrative, unfortunately, is split by two extremes where it's a partisan battle, where we're used for partisan politics, where one mm -hmm. that says Islam is peaceful and wants us to be anesthetized, and the other that says that, well, maybe all Muslims are the problem, and there isn't the 98 percent of Americans in the middle. See, where's the strategic response? And we're there. We're screaming right. from the rooftops. We just need the platforms to do so. Oh, well, maybe it's me. I, I need to hear more screaming. I, I certainly hear you. And I, I take that right. away. But doctor, always good seeing you, my friend.